think I mentioned it before, the people here are extremely nice yeah. and, uh, you know, adjusting to different type of defense, you know, uh, than what we did at Cincinnati, most certainly than what I was coaching in New York. It's been pretty good. No big complaints. It's, everybody knows the house for sale and want to be called me. <laughs> but other than that, that was good. It's good. What are you finding the biggest uh, challenges are or the teaching points you're trying to make with your group that's different for them compared to what they I think we have to be a little bit more aggressive than what they might have been accustomed to in the past. Now, full transparency, I haven't completely studied every single room of every game last year, but I think we have to be just a tad bit more aggressive. So getting these guys to understand how I'm going to make you a football player, Okay. Attacks the rock, goes and gets after the cue, plays the run violently and aggressively. I think that is kind of a, just a switch of mentality because of the structure of the defense, not because of the coach. Right, so that's probably the biggest push right now. Uh, and then, like any coach, you know, Coach K had his way of doing things. I have my way of doing mine. They did it for two years this way, and then previous coach before that for like Geo and. Rodas and those guys, they had a way that they did it for three years or whatever it was. So now you got a new coach coming in with new techniques, new beliefs, and there's nothing that's right or wrong, but it's just the way that you prefer to do things. So it's a combination of, you know, teaching them skills, man, and really getting them to take into the way that I do things. Those things, it's probably you know, the biggest challenge. That's I'll call it a challenge. I enjoy it. It's probably the most fun part for me, you know, is that I tell those guys when y'all, Appreciate you guys. It's keep me employed for another week. This is good. This is fun. This is enjoyable. You guys talked about playing with your asses, kind of back. Is that <laughs> I didn't feel like that will matter. Well, it, it's what the game ends up being, right? Like it's it's chaos, but it's controlled chaos for us. Sometimes we know what's going on. It's going to be chaos. Sometimes coach doesn't even tell us what the chaos is because he wants coaches to be able to coach through chaos as well. So game time comes. It puts them in a position to be able to play, play fast, think slow, which is what we want them to do. Um, and so you train them in that moment right now. So for me, for coach, for everybody, I purposely don't want you to feel comfortable in practice. Not physically, like you have to push yourself, yes. But I want you to be on edge. I want you to feel like you don't know what's going on. Because now, over time, or over time, you get to a point where you think like, okay, feel comfortable with this no matter what coach does. If y'all ever, Want to have a little fun? Because I know, just watch the end of practice. We pull out the cans. Just watch me. I make it. I make it crazy. I start. If it's supposed to be a rip call, I start yelling Liz for no reason. You know, if it's supposed to be Liz call, I start yelling Rip for no reason because I want them to hear different things, know who's talking, what's going. I want to create that kind of messiness so that game time. That's real. You know how to react and work and train. When you come from coming from the NFL and now you're working with with college guys, are there things you Dress differently at this level than you did at the professional level, or or, or not really. I think uh, one thing that always holds true is technique. Right, no matter what level you're at, you're always going to stress the amount of technique that you have. I would say the different stresses on what it takes to get them there. You know, once you get those guys in the National Football League, you might be able to tell a guy something once or twice and he'll get it. At this level, some of these kids just came from high school, and you don't know what the level of training was for some of them high school so it takes a little bit longer to get there so I would say that always stress and technique that's the same the effort it's the same a lot of the drills that we do and some of the stuff that we show outside of what I did at North Fort at Cincinnati is a lot of I show them examples of guys in the National Football League doing it not just with the Jets but everywhere and how they do it how they practice and do it so that stuff all remains the same but the amount of time that it takes the reps needed to be able to learn some stuff I would say that's the biggest biggest difference outside of the fact that Got your grades every Thursday. You know what I mean. That's it. Great. Uh, Gio mentioned that you, you kind of put up the stats of last year, what you guys were losing with Keanu Young. Just, would you, what kind of mindset did you try to instill by doing that? And just, yeah. just that we got a long way to go. We can't rest. We can't rest on what we think we are, what we think we have, or what we think we've done. We have a long way to go because between Herbic and uh, Keanu, like we. We lost a lot, and I wanted those guys to see it. It was not a um, 
It was not an indictment on them. It was more so a call to action on this is what we have to do. So just in case you wanted to get comfortable, understand we got some things we got to get straight first, all right? And let's just call a spade a spade. Here are where the numbers are. This is what we have returning in the room. Y'all let me know if this looks good to y'all. No? Okay, cool. Let's go put on the police. Let's go get to work, you know? So there was more of that kind of call to action as opposed to looking at them and telling them that, you know, got to be a lot better it's just the reality of it hopefully it motivates the guys to want to get better every day and not get comfortable with what we saw with, with Isaiah Bonds coming back for 60 what is that what you possibly saw on film from last year with prior but just what do you think he can bring to that well he's stout that's for sure be strong to stay square play with good pass. I think more than anything, all these guys encapsulate kind of what you want out of a guy who plays hard and practices hard, which I say embodies that. But I think he's a, a big, strong, in my opinion, immovable force if we can get it all going the right way. And we've been trying to tweak those things, a couple of things that were so slightly um, through practice, through individual, to kind of help him be efficient in his movement, to extend the longevity of his career, and to be that immovable force that I think we need to be able to play ball. Where are you exactly working out with that? Yeah, I mean, well, you just talk about, just start with the stance, change the stance. Without getting too much in particulars, right? But you just change the stance because, in my mind, when playing defensive line, and you just opened up the door for me to give you a class. <laughs> All right, so in pass rush, both in run and in pass, Playing defensive lines about being efficient in your movement, no matter what it is. And I learned this from my trainer way back when. And every little thing that you do, being locked and loaded in your stance, not a lot of fidgeting, how, how are you positioning your stance, where your knees, where your feet, where your toes, where they angle to, where you're going, everything. Because those guys, we got to give them credit across the side, on the other side of the ball. They're not as athletic as us, but they are still athletes at the end of the day, right? So you make one false step, and then all of a sudden, that guy's got to beat on you. You make one uh, ne unnecessary move and that guy's got to be on you. So how do we correct this stance that we're fishing? That way when it comes time to come out of your hips and strike, like I was a fisher from start to finish, from my toes up to my knees, hips, shoulders, hands, right to that offensive line. So just something that subtle, right? And the tweak that we made in the stance, I think we'll be able to have it uncoil that power, which again leads to that that idea of being kind of an unmovable force in my opinion. Or erect that, you know, force to be dealt with. You work with some of the practices for the that dollar work from the DNs that brought up the contact. Talk to some of the guys just a little bit different from them. They haven't played that wide before. What are some of the challenges that you're seeing as they learn this and what do you think it's gonna do when they you start picking it up? I think you just said it, right? Getting those guys out on edges, especially those interior guys, getting them out on edge and, and helping them understand what exactly we're trying to accomplish with the dollar defense, right? It's very difficult to go from being an interior guy and all of a sudden you got a little bit of space. Got a little bit more time to react to pass rush, right? As versus being inside, and I can see those guys. They're not used to having time to be able to go rush the passer. So now they get locked up with a guy, and they don't know what to do. You know, it's like, hey, no, remember that drill we worked on? Go get busy on this dude, man. You know, but um, just adjusting to the time, the space, and the technique at which we play it, which is unique to our defense here, um, that, that our dollar defense that Coach talked about. It's just going to take a little bit of a lot of bit of practice. You know, but that's that's probably the biggest thing, just getting them used to the time and space that they have versus a guy being on you right now. But athletically, you think these guys can be pretty effective with that one? Oh, too? for sure, yeah. You don't have to be a great athlete to play it. You just have to have great technique. If you have really good technique, you can be able to execute it. Now, I, I do think they have good athletes. Are they as good athletes as me? No, I tell them every day. <laughs> you, must, like, you do have to be good athletes to be able to do it. Um, but, you know, they, they are a, a bunch of good group in the room. Great yeah, it's the main part being just getting off the rock and attack. I mean, we did the same drill every day with Coach White up in New York. We did the same drill. We started to practice every day with the same drill to try and train that quick touch reaction with those guys getting off the ball. And the next thing that we wanted to do was to be able to just go run. I mean, just go attack, 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 attack. As a defensive lineman, as a defensive Coach, it's the same thing. I want these guys to be in the in front. I mean, they do. They have to. I mean, we can't sit back and catch blocks. We can't sit back and say play at the line of scrimmage and play lateral, give guys an opportunity to get on. So the 
biggest principle with the attack front was you get off. That was the most important thing ever, right? And so taking that, while not necessarily, there's some intricacies of the attack front that don't carry over here, but the big part being the get off um, and how we train that get off and how we did it every day is probably what makes the most sense. When you work with the other person, what's the well, that's why they call me coach, right? Like, is to be able to take a guy and be able to have him get off the rock, but understand when and when not to, understand the um, the integrity of the defense, where you fit into it, and how that plays into, you know, how we make plays or how we do our jobs, whatever the case may be. So, you do it by training the fundamental to get off and how the different ways that we do it, and then put those quick loose fibers. But then the next part of that is us helping them understand where this fits into the defense. Greg, you worked with Mike Tressel at over at Cincinnati. What kind of stands out about him as a coach and as a person that he's brought here? Yeah, well, I think that he always wants to make sure everybody in the room is on the same page. You know, and continuity, I learned that in New York, continuity amongst the staff is a big thing. You know what I mean? And so as long as we have in the room everybody speaking the same language, whether we agree or disagree, as long as we all speak the same language, we have a chance to be successful. And I think what Tress does is make sure the staff in general can all speak the same language to disseminate it amongst the guys. When it comes to leading the defense and leading those guys down in the room, he always makes it about the players. He has very, very specific demands that he wants for the guys. He has very, very specific KPIs, if you will, or measurables that he has for the room. And so those guys can know where we are, know where we stand as a defense. And if you're a coach of any sort, you'd like for those guys to have those kind of measurables. You'd like to be very specific for those guys so they can know, are we growing, are we getting better, or are we not? And uh, I think that makes it a little bit easier for guys to be able to play ball, et cetera, et cetera. Gio has been here for a couple of years, behind behind the last couple of years. Just tell me, what are your impressions of him and what he can get this defense? Gio? All right, my, my impression, Gio, is that if he ever sends me whatever that slow, uh, romantic um, Latina song that, that he sent me the other day. Uh, Gio will find another school player. Because okay. right. I did not appreciate that. All right. I did not like it. All right. It wasn't good. I won't say what song it was. I don't know the song. It wasn't good. That was my initial impression of Gio. Kidding. I love Gio. Um, I think he has the ability to be really good if we can get all of his motions going in the right direction getting his vision corrected on knowing where he needs to be, when he needs to be there, how he's going to see those things. Taking the techniques that we teach and implementing them and then being able to apply it when they need to be applied. Now, everybody says that's every D lineman, but it's more specific to some than others, and I think Gio falls into that category. Can he help the team? Absolutely. Will he help the team? Absolutely. But now the best way for him to help the team is to take these techniques and take these fundamentals and be able to apply them when they need to be applied, where they need to be applied to. And I think it would be, I think it would be just fine, honestly. We asked the guys to describe you. <laughs> Two things commonly came up: juice and then Super Bowl rings. Is that how would you describe yourself? Well, the Super Bowl rings thing is all superficial. I don't talk about them. They've never seen them. Uh, I, I, I don't do that. I just, I just don't. I tell these guys all the time. I had my turn, man. It's not my turn anymore. It's you all's turn, which is why I coach. I coach because I want you all to have the opportunity to achieve, possibly go achieve the things that I do. Why I coach is because I think there's young men that need opportunities to be able to achieve a dream. They need to be raised to be better young men, better football players, uh, have a coach that has a focus on their education um, while they go through this thing. I coach because I believe there are a lot of fundamentals in life that can be taught through football while still allowing the guys to have fun, which leads to my next point of juice. It's my job every single day, just as a person, to spread joy, laughter, cheer, whatever it is. That's my purpose, that's my calling, to serve other people. Do I have bad times? Absolutely. Do I have a couple big bad moments? For sure. But, man, my overall purpose in my life is to wake up every day and smile and make sure people have joy in this world. And so when these kids show up to campus and they, they come in this place, they've left their families, they left home, they may have some situation going on at home. What does it look like for me to come in and continue to bear down on a bad day or a bad morning or whatever the case may be? It's my job to show up here and have joy and juice. That's why if you, if you heard some music blasted on the second floor this morning, it was me. They come in the meeting room, we play music. So I appreciate the juice, but it's, it's intentional because I want them to understand that this game is fun. I'm not here to stand on your backs to make myself elevate myself higher. I am with you guys. We are going through this thing together. So understand something. If I come in here, 
joy, and I smile, and I play with energy, or I practice, I mean, I coach with energy and intensity, I demand the same thing out of you because that's what I showed up here to do. Now, again, not a lot of people want to live like that because it is tired. I fell asleep on the Xbox controller with my son last night. You know what I mean? Um, it is tired, but I got into coaching to pour all myself into the guys, not so that I can sit here and stand on their backs and make myself look good. I wanted to pour into these kids and know that coaching is fun. Like playing college football, extremely difficult, but it can be extremely fun. I want you guys to know that. Play for me, you're going to have a great time because I'm going to walk in this building every day filled with joy with the opportunity I get to do to help you go achieve a dream, go get an education, and potentially go get a couple Super Bowl rings. I don't know why they talk about that. I don't know what talk about it. I don't stand. That makes, that makes me sound like I stand in the room and just tell them how good I was. I don't, you know. But. They didn't mention you talk about taxes or something? Yeah. <laughs> we did. See? There you go. I told you. You come to play for me. I'm developing young men. So... Before we started our meeting, there was a tax document that was sent out to all the kids with the NILs or whatever. I was unsure if those guys looked at them or not. So before we started our meeting, I took the PDF, put it up on the board, and we walked through the whole document and we talked about taxes. It's important. So we got a thing called Operation Manhood, and I talked about where well, I want these guys to develop as young men. And, uh, and we'll go through different things. None of them know how to write a check. Don't worry about it. You will when Coach Scruggs is down with you. Don't worry about it. So, yeah. James Thompson came on sort of at the end of last year. What have you seen from him so far, and what do you envision for him next season? Well, first of all, he's from Cincinnati, so he knows he's a good football player. Because uh, I'm from Cincinnati. All good football players come from Cincinnati. I want to hear that in Florida, California, Texas stuff. Ohio, okay, to start with. Um, but, no, big, explosive athlete. Again, one of those guys that we just have to get control of. And if I can get him to just tighten down his technique, his hands, his footwork, and get it all going in the right direction. He's really got a chance to be a really good player um, for our defense. You see the want to, like the desire, the passion to be really, really good. Sometimes we don't get to see it on the outside, but I get to see it every day. I hear the questions that he asks. I see the way that he works. I know his want to be great, which is what you want to start with as a young man uh, or when you have a young man. But I look at him as somebody that's extremely explosive, powerful, but also has quickness at his size, that if we can get just get it all going in the right direction and tighten it up just a little bit, we got a chance to be really good. Yeah. Hey, I wrote something like that, I hope to coach you as a defensive lineman as a as he is in the line. Yeah, I think it's awesome. I mean, he came and ran our inside videotape this morning, and uh, we'll do that all during the season. I sit in the back with my iPad and I take notes because I get to learn from a coach who's a mentor to me in his profession, right? Uh, you know, he's just a professional, great husband, pretty good father too. But um, it is very cool to hear a guy at, um, speak the same language as you and know that I got a reference in the person that just so happens to be the head coach of the, of the program now about how we want to do stuff. You know, I don't have to sit, sit back in my office and figure it out myself. I can go ask the head coach. 